What's up, Internet? Jordan here from Air to the Mead. Today, I'm going to be trying to give you a really quick update on the yeast overload experiment. Someone on Reddit, Dietrich Mead, had asked if, basically, is it possible that the final gravity on the overloaded bucket, which appeared to have stalled out around 1010, isn't actually residual sugar, but just the density of the solution from so much yeast being packed into such a small amount of fluid. And I responded that the thought had crossed my mind, but the only way I could really think to test that would be to try sterile filtering the mead and attempt to get all of the yeast out and then to check gravity again after I filtered it. And from the comments and other feedback that I've received the first two videos so far, it seems like most of you would rather see me age this and see how that works out. So I didn't really want to skip straight to filtering. But then another Reddit user, Big Boy Tendies, asked if it uh, would maybe work to just mix up another batch using only water and yeast, measure the water before and after the addition of yeast added at the same pitch rate, and see if it increases the gravity. So that's what I did. I took a smaller 125 gram brick of yeast worked out that that would need to be added to somewhere around 5.3 cups worth of water to get roughly the same pitch rate. And it didn't need to be super precise here because I'm really just looking for the proof of concept of whether or not this high of a concentration of yeast can increase the gravity reading. I got my 5.3 cups of water, checked the gravity on that and confirmed that it was pretty much exactly 1.000. Then I added the entire 125 gram brick of yeast stirred it up really well to try and get a homogenous solution before pulling a sample to read and the gravity was 1028 son of a gun i've been watching this sample for about 24 hours now and as the yeast tries to settle out and calms down from its initial rehydration waking up and whatnot it, it has dropped a little bit about eight points we're down to about 1020 now now obviously the actual mead i brewed in the experiment has had a lot more time for yeast to settle out but it's still finished at 1010, about 10 points lower than we're at after 24 hours here. So maybe the extra time that the mead has had to clear compared to the yeast and water solution here explains the 10 point discrepancy between their gravity readings, even though the pitch rate was about the same. So yeah, I thought this was a really fun and cool new information that I should bring to you guys as a possible correction. When I said that it stalled out, it may not have stalled out. It might just have been the ridiculously high concentration of yeast and that may very well be bone dry if we can actually get all the yeast out of there. But I stand by my previous recommendation not to do this at home. It just, it may not have stalled, but it still tastes like. Anyway, that's the conclusion of my quick addendum to this experiment. It sounds like the majority of you would prefer to see me age this overloaded batch before we go any further. So I'll continue to let it sit for a while and let you know if there are any significant changes for the time being. It's still cloudy as heck and doesn't look like it's improved significantly. So I'll be giving it more time and see how it goes. Cause I'm still looking